But this is going against all the evidence, and I'd ask at this time that the state will be allowed to withdraw its plea bargain agreement with the defendant. She's not taking responsibility. Not him. No, you're not. Welcome to the Rebel Chaser channel. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge John Stevens at the Jefferson County Criminal District Court in Texas. And he is sentencing a defendant, but her attorney, in my opinion, is doing her way more harm than good. But I'll let you guys be the judge. Presenting the record here, we have called Carla Colbert in 23CR1647. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. And you are here with Ms. Mantellini, your attorney and the state's attorney. You have earlier pleaded guilty to the second degree felony of aggravated assault, uh, causing serious bodily injury uh, with uh, a vehicle. And the pre-sentence report has been prepared and the parties uh, have no objections other than you're going to make comments, I guess. No clarifications and what we disagree with. That we don't want the judge to take as fact. All right. Or in other people's All right. Then it's rendition. made a part of the record subject to any uh, rulings the court may subsequently make based upon differences of, of opinion. Yes, sir. And uh, go ahead. Uh, the defendant no. may proceed. Okay. I'll start with sure. those three items. Um, there are comments in the... Um, Section of page one that begins on page one, statements of interested parties. And um, of course, the, the interested parties have the right to express their uh, feelings and, and every whatever their opinions are. But there are a few things I just want to clear up. On the bottom of page two, I think it might be the first time somebody mentions that uh, the police didn't search her car and the, the parties that there at the time found her purse and it had meth in it i don't know if they and then, and then they uh, they had reported to the police and the police didn't do anything about it but as far as this report goes um my client says that she didn't have anything and i don't know if they found anything in that purse or anything but i would ask the court to disregard those sorts of comments regarding an illegal substance that we don't even know if it was there or not the second thing was um uh, it's mentioned several times about the car wreck that she was in and her boyfriend was killed. She, I think she said, I think the probation officer included that she ended up, she was also on life support. She was a passenger in the car and not the driver in that car. And I did not want the court to be misled into thinking that she had caused that accident and caused the death of the other person. And the third thing, uh, one second, Your Honor. was um, and a witness is going to have their perception from their vantage point, and that's why we have trials for different witnesses to take the stand and provide their perceptions of what they saw. But when one of the witnesses, her perception was that it looked like to her that my client just backed up and then just floored it intentionally to smash into the man. What we do say is that we agree that the state had sufficient evidence to find for for a jury or the judge to find that um, that it, regardless of whether it was when she put it in reverse or was putting it back in gear and what happened whether the car lunged forward we you know how they sometimes do I've experienced that myself over my driving experience but um, but we definitely. Could, acknowledge that it was reckless for her to even have had her hand on a gear shift when there was a person standing in front of the car but the perception that it looked like to somebody from that it, that it was an intentional mow down i would ask the court to just take that as a witness's perception but not not fact and not a found fact in this case and that that was all i had to argue about on the report okay on that last yes, part sir. The defendant entered a plea of guilty and yes. signed this document under oath. Yes, sir. Huh. Intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly. And we would we do concede that it was reckless for her to do that. And believe that can could I, be I finish and off. then you can respond. I know you're anxious to get the point in. I know what your point is going yes, to be. Uh, but really, <laughs> what this fully states is 
I understand what I'm charged with. I am aware of the consequences of my plea. I am mentally competent to enter my guilty plea. I have read the charging instrument. My attorney has explained it to me. I have committed each and every element alleged. Well, then if it is my fault that we did not put only as to reckless, then that would be on me and not on her because I did not. I've never gone in and torn apart an indictment in the plea papers to single out a single finding in all my years. I never had it found it necessary, but apparently it was necessary this time. And if it was necessary, I would ask that we'd be allowed to amend those plea papers to say as to reckless. Are you asking to withdraw your plea? No, sir. We still believe in what we're pleading to. What else? Did you want to say? Okay, so after that, uh, moving on from the pre sentence report, um, I can tell you, and you'll have an opportunity, and she'll have an opportunity to speak with you, and that there are lives that have been drastically changed. She's, just when she speaks to me, it, she's in tears almost all the time. It's not something that she's just like, well, I don't care about that, or I don't care about that. She cares about it all. And in her recollection, she did not push that gas pedal. She did not intend for that car to go forward and hit that man. And and the resulting injuries are just devastating. Not only what caused the vehicle. what caused the the vehicle to move forward, an act of God. No, it sounds like to me that you know how sometimes engines are racy, and when you put it in gear, it lunges forward. That's what that's all we can figure is maybe something like that happened because she says she did not jam on that gas pedal and make it make and, and hit him intentionally to hurt him or even intentionally to make it car move. It just jumped when she changed the gear and she shouldn't have been in any gear. And that's the, that's the problem. Um, but uh, she is, uh, you know, she has hopes for being able to um, take this lesson and do something with her life. She wants to get her GED. She has family support. Um, I think that the, the truth is, if you read the recommend the the comments of probation, the evaluation um, and the uh, recommendations, I couldn't have put it any better pointing out the valid reasons why this woman uh, not only could benefit from probation, but maybe um, is the appropriate thing that for her to, uh, have an opportunity to do under your supervision. There are definitely cons that they put that he puts in here, and they are true too. But it's it's almost like he was pain, trying to be painstakingly fair with in this particular situation and with this particular defendant that probation is just not an impossibility. It's not really a foregone conclusion that she should not have that, and she is asking for that opportunity to uh to have that I, I believe you've got some support letters i did provide them to um the state and um apparently this is if you if you wanted to believe that she intentionally and knowingly crashed into that man and that would show her to be a very violent person but as you see she has no violence in her history uh, and her family does not feel like she's a violent person um it was really bad situation and I'm sure she could go back and take it back. She'd just say, take the car and walk away. But you know, there's, and, there's not going to be anything to take back. Am I correct it? the way I'm reading this that uh, the victim was in the midst of attempting to, to repossess the vehicle? That's correct, John. Okay. And it, it'd be easy to think that it's just a retaliation thing. I'm going to get you. Why would you but, say that? Because I know that's how people think, but sometimes it's well, why not would that they, way. Would they think? Well, they don't all have to think the same way, regardless well, why. Maybe it's just mind. rational thought. It could be, but it doesn't always have to be true. And sometimes no, there's an exception. It doesn't have to be, but and that's what we're asking. Really, for I, to recognize. I mean, I've lived a long time myself. I mean, we live on experiences. And, and I've had a car that lunged forward when I put it in gear. I know what that feels like. When it someone just goes was out trying to repossess your No, vehicle. there was nobody in Well, front. don't you see really a state of mind with, yes. where there would be a motive here? And that's so, what I'm saying. She we knows can't speak she at put the same it in time. gear. <clears throat> well, I'm trying to make sure that you hear I me. I know, do. but let me speak and then you speak. Okay. It's a motive. 
That's obvious, right? No, Your Honor. You don't say, are you saying she would not have a motive if someone is trying to repossess her vehicle? She stays in the vehicle, does not cooperate with that, but puts it in a gear? She might and have moves a... Can I just I finish I thought anything? I heard a period. I thought I heard a period. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Don't you see that as co really common sense that there would be a motive there? Are you asking me? Yeah. I'm saying that, yes, I can see how that would okay. be a first thing. But even in the probable cause affidavit, I think that the officer recognizes that. Um, he says there's she no motive. wasn't sure how it accelerated and whether or not intentions were to harm. She was reckless. And we agree. It was reckless for her to even be in the gear position of any position of the car. And sometimes cars do lunge forward. And it could look like from somebody on the sidelines that they plowed forward. I mean, there's all kinds of variables, but in this particular instance, I believe that she, I believe that she is remorseful about all of the injuries and the whole event. But I I believe that she was reckless in the event. But to say that she was intentionally plowing the down, man down, I believe that's in this particular instance with this particular defendant in light of a repossession of. I think there's an opportunity for the judge to recognize maybe it maybe it wasn't intentional act like everybody else might think from the sideline. The victim who was present, not you, right, says otherwise. Well, and I'm sure everyone would have their opinion. Yes, sir. And there, there so I don't, and I but, can't imagine he would want to give her even an inch of break uh, terribly and lifelong. But I'm just asking the court to recognize it. And if she had been driving down the road and seen it and run over, and that's one thing. But there are there are incidents that occur that are not the basis of based upon malice. And she believes that she did not smash on that smash on that accelerator. She did not cause that car to run into the man, and she could and she jumped out immediately and started assisting him with uh with his injuries and trying to get put a tourniquet on it she didn't jump out and run away i mean this was a very real event and not anything that she had intended have i correctly uh, described everything if i miss anything that you want me to add before we pass the so that did the commission of this act I'm saying that she um, was she it, she she put her went into gear I believe that's when he was lifting the hood and she should have not ever put it in gear and anything after that should have never happened but that's what she has done for these injuries to this man and his well and the and the, the trickle down effects to his whole family. But um that's what she why did. she have done so I think he wasn't my understanding was was he under the hood when he put it in gear? No. And what was your intent when you put it in gear? It just have it when you go in reverse. Automatically, I put you. I put it in drive, but before I why did it in reverse? That's the question. I was trying to keep him from opening the hood. Okay, but he, he was not. But this is going against all the evidence, and I'd ask at this time that the state will be allowed to withdraw its plea bargain agreement with the defendant. She's not responsible. I don't know. No, you're not. We have to withdraw the the. The state would respectfully withdraw a plea bargain agreement with with the defendant. I would ask that the state reconsider. She is acknowledging that she put that car in gear. No. She should not have had her hand on the gear shift. Period. And what the ensuing events that occurred are one of the elements the state sought just to prove. And why? Just because we are trying to make it be evident that in her heart, which one was the one that she would. That maybe if the state could prove all three of them, maybe they could. Maybe they only prove one. Maybe they only have to prove the other. But she knows that the state could prove whatever because of her behavior. And we would ask to reconsider, let her take responsibility. No. The state would respectfully request withdrawal for she's 
she's she's telling falsehoods that I know that other witnesses all say he was under that hood whenever she started all this. She didn't just put it in one gear, she put it in two gears because she backed up with him under the hood. And then she put it in drive and to drive forward. And she's not accepting. I understand she doesn't want to be punished, but I can't in good conscience continue with this if she's not going to accept full responsibility for what she did. And the, besides, the complainant in this case is already fully adamantly against the plea bargain that the state has made. And if and I know that if since he's present in this courtroom, since he's heard this story, that he's even more so. And so is the state of Texas. So we would add, respectfully request to be allowed to move our plea bargain agreement at this time and remove that cap of seven. Well, anything in her attorney's argument on her behalf has caused you to change your mind. Her testify when she just said what she said, that tells me where she's at, and that's that's it. I'm done. Is it? Well, you're mm -hmm. uh, no. uh, the thing is, though, that's how she remembers it, and that doesn't responsibility for the entire event, the entire event, regardless of what it is, what ensued. She is taking responsibility for it. Uh, anything else? No, you're. I'm going to grant the state's request. And in addition to that, the court will note in statements of interested parties that as part of the pre-sentence report, the victim is uh, greatly dissatisfied with this plea agreement and has asked the court to reconsider and impose a lengthier term of incorporation. I cannot do that under the terms of, of this agreement. I'm capped. Uh, no more than seven seven years in prison. So for that reason, well, the court is going to um, uh, grant this uh, state's motion. And also, on the, that wasn't made. The court was going to refuse to accept the plea bargain agreement based upon uh, what the pre-sentence report provides. So that puts us back in square one. And then what we're going to do is set it for trial. Yes, sir. Okay. I, would, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to discuss with her how the trial uh, system works in in our court. So I guess... The trial system works by law. Yes. Well, I'd like to explain to her the law. Sir. Yeah. And uh, it will be set for trial. And y'all can talk and tell me if... Uh, we need to take up another hearing as to representation. Okay. okay. I mean, uh, shall we maybe be able to do that today while we're here, or do you want it on a different day? Whenever. I mean, I'm, I'm here. I'm taking care of business it. here. So, See what she wants to do. Yeah. So I'm here. Uh, the quicker we move forward, I think, would be the better for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we recall cause number 23 CR 1647. And uh, Ms. Culver, the court, uh, just for the record here, you were before the court for sentencing. The court, uh, uh, well, the state of Texas requested that be withdrawn uh, for uh, this agreement. And the court on its own also upon review of the file felt like the uh, offer that was being proposed to dispose of this case was not in the best interest of justice for all concerned. And then we, uh, by that revocation and also that withdrawal uh, of the offer and the revocation by the court of the plea deal, then it will be automatically set for trial unless some other disposition can be reached. Do you understand? Yes. Uh, and Ms. Mantellini is able to uh, represent you for trial. And nobody should be talking you out of allowing the public defenders to try cases or else we'd all be in trouble. But you have an option here. Ms. Mantellini is competent to... Uh, try cases and it may go to trial quicker if you uh, agreed to release her but that's your decision the rules 
of the Indigent Commission who are strict. And they deal with us in every county, every two years. And uh, I've been even in front of the Indigent uh, Commission as a whole on matters of review. So uh, I know what they uh, think about that their, their rules are to be followed 100%. No one can pressure you about making a decision. And if the, re uh, and the record, I'm not pressing, I have not pressured her to do anything, Your Honor. I just don't want it to look like I don't, have. Well, don't, let allowed, guilty, don't let guilty it's, conscience come out. It's not, your, I, there is uh, no guilt in this conscience. So, so, uh, um, but the Indigent Commission is going to also look at our track record and the odds, uh, they, that they know what is acceptable in odds of people making decisions uh, in this regard. It would probably go to trial quicker. If that's what you want, a quick disposition at trial, releasing her is a good idea for you because we can get somebody off the trial docket wheel, which who are ready, willing, and able to try cases and get to it. The public defenders, like she is, have a lot of cases, and most of those, if not literally all of them, are either disposed of by a plea or uh, they go to trial, and generally another attorney is assigned to represent them because the people, the defendants, uh, an accelerated trial, and I can appreciate that. What do you want to do? I want to release them. Okay, you want to try out quicker, quick than what would probably she would be able to prepare for it. Okay, then I'm going to uh, uh, grant that uh, the next person on the trial docket will, you don't get to pick them, and I don't, it's the next person whoever's in line, I don't know who it is. Yes, sir. Uh, because we have a, a large number of people who are competent uh, criminal lawyers, and they're going to, the, it'll be the next person assigned, I will uh, inform them of that, and then we will place it on the trial docket. And uh, if there's uh, an attempt to dispose of this without a trial, let me know. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Anything else? I think that is it. Sir I think Judge Stevens got really perturbed by this attorney. I mean, I know she was advocating greatly for her client, but at what point do you tell the defense attorney to be quiet? I mean, when I put my car in drive, I usually have my foot on the brake, especially if somebody is standing in front of the car. I mean, you don't just put your car straight into drive knowing there's someone standing there unless you have your foot on the brake. So she was completely wrong. And to sit there and try so hard to say, oh, well, you know when a car lurches? Well, no, I don't know when a car lurches. And if your car does lurch, then you get used to keeping your foot on the brake. So that is all bull in my opinion and besides the fact the victim in the case really didn't want this plea deal in my opinion it's a good thing it's going to trial now now she can profess her innocence all the way until the jury hands down that verdict and we'll see thank you guys so very much for watching let me know what you think about this one, and I'll see you next time.